seek a way out. Well, this is fun. So, first dead body investigation feels like Ace Attorney. This is so yeah, this game just took took a turn for the interesting. Uh, let's see what we got. We got section one, section two. Uh, let's see, we got a chair. There's blood on the chair. Do you think this was the dead guys? Yeah, probably. There's something metallic on top of that table. Hey, is that a music box? Well, let's have a look. There's a little music box in this table. Can I have a look? Is it... Uh, how do I have a look? You said let's have a look. How, how do I... What? Okay. We're not having a look then. Or unless we have to go over here? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lamp. But it doesn't turn on. I don't think there's anything special about it. You know what? There's a special story I can tell. Um, uh, I haven't really thought about this until now, but I don't think I'll buy it up. The way I'm recording is funky. I, uh, when I got my pop filter, it was actually at first I was annoyed because I was like, um, it didn't come with a way to really stand itself up. You had to hung, hang it on something. Normally you hang it on your own mic, but um, it's one of those old music boxes. How about we wind it up? Yeah, normally you hang it on your own mic, but my mic doesn't work that way. Um, it doesn't have a good place to hang on. So what I had to do was uh, I had to look for round things, something that I could hang it on, and uh, the only thing I could find, at least the only thing without looking too hard, just looking in my basement, where I record, because I'm, I'm stuck up in my basement. <laughs> I'm locked in here day and night. No, um, is a lamp. I have a lamp that has like a circular surface that's that's sturdy enough that it'll hold my uh, pop filter. And that's just what I use. Just put a lamp there. Not plugged in. Doesn't need to be. I just that's what I use it for. And I get more mileage out of it this way than I do ever turning it on, which is pretty funky. Anyways, so those old music boxes. How about we wind it up? Why does it sound like that? Is it broken? The pins on the cylinder are shaped all weird. I don't think those are pins. It looks like something. someone put something else on top of it. I think we're going to have to take it apart to figure out what's going on, don't you? Don't you? Oh, okay. So I guess I need like, some kind of screwdriver or, or something or other. Um, we got this. A camcorder. It looks like it's pointed at the door. Well, the power's on. Why would someone want to videotape a door? Hey, those are interesting, man. Don't knock them until you try them. I, I don't even. Let's see if shaking is going to get us anywhere. And no dice. There's a plaque on the door. Plaque. Plaque. But it doesn't say anything. So this is the exit, huh? Don't even really have to try this door to know it's locked. I know it. Tried it anyways. No dice. It doesn't matter what I push on here, it's not working. I don't think the power's on. Clever. It's a little rectangular hole. I think it's the keyhole of some sort. With the right key, I should be able to unlock it. Well, it's a shame I don't have the right key then. All I have is the music box, right? Mm. Yes. Yes, sir, we Bob. Got a bed. A bed. There's nothing in it. Oh, I thought someone might be hiding. You never know. Uh, yeah. yeah. A chair. Uh, could I? Well, that's not what I meant, but, uh. Wait, is he. Mo was that, like, monitoring our. Maybe. I'm gonna check this first. Or, yeah, I don't wanna check. I wanna check that last. That looks like it's important. I think this probably used to be a door. Nobody's going through it as long as this metal plate's here, though. Well, even without the metal plate, the death's in the way. Junpei, where are you going? I was going to pop over to the communications office and talk to Ace. You're going to leave me alone here? No, 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 no. You could, um, stay here with me a little longer. There's still a lot of places we haven't looked. Uh, okay! So, yeah, how old is she again? I think, yeah, again, I'm pretty sure she's, uh... I know I'm in college. I think, what is she, late high school? So, we could work this out, you know what I mean? It wouldn't be too weird. <laughs> but, um, is it legal? <laughs> Are you 18 yet? <laughs> yep, 
Even if I'm like 20 and you're 17, I think there's something weird going on. Um, I mean, I don't personally, but I think the law looks at it as weird. Like, it's like this weird boundary where it's like if you're under 18, no matter how little under 18 you are versus over 18, it's like considered rape or I, I don't know how that works. But um, what's the deal with this? Is it some kind of code? There are four rows of numbers and letters. Wait, we're alone again? Can't we talk? I just remember Ace is in the other room. I didn't even realize. Can't we just talk? Ugh. They all start with an O and end with an eight. F N or V, respectively. They'll start with an O and end with an eight. F N or V, respectively. Okay, interesting. Maybe this has something to do with number bases. Oh, this is more file shit. I'll look at it later. Actually, never mind. This could be really important. Like, so I'm gonna look at the file first. Um. Yes, yeah, so we got the nautical table thing. Uh, numerical system chart. Controls are gonna escape. I'm just gonna. Okay, the medical records. Oh, okay. Oh, I didn't even look at that. <laughs> and I got it right, anyways. Uh, I guess that's kind of trial and error type of thing. Um. Anyways, numerical system chart. Zero one two three four five six seven eight. Zero one two three four five six seven eight nine. A B C D E F. Zero one two three four five six seven eight nine. A B C D E F G H I J K L M N. Yeah, they're in like. Are they in uh, groups of eight? Nine. A B C D E F. No, they're not. Not quite. Wait, no. Cause zero to eight, that's nine. Then we got nine. Then we got seven. Yeah, eight, seven, fall by eight. No, nine, seven, fall by eight. Um, G H I J K L M N. And then, uh, O P Q R S T U V. That's another A. What could it mean, though? Uh, oh, I can search! Numerical system chart found in the captain's quarters. 10 in base 10. Oh! This is hexadecimal. Okay. 10 in base 10 as written as A in hexadecimal. Therefore, 11 is B, 12 is C, 13 is D, 14 is E, and so on. This chart shows the rules for each. Numeral system. Okay, so is that saying like A is the number like ten, B is eleven, C is twelve, kind of thing? Um, maybe. Uh, okay, let's look at this because this looks interesting. Uh, there's a bunch of weird buttons on here. They probably switch what you see on the screens. Do you know how to work this thing? Um, why don't we just press one of these? Like this one. Whoa! I guess it just changed the. Well, what the hell is this? Heh. <laughs> Jimpe snorted with grim humor for the second time since he'd come into the room. The four screens along the bottom had a single letter, each spelling out zero. Jimpe felt as though he was being mocked. The real villain was somewhere laughing at him. What do you think? He turned to Clover, who was standing next to him. Her voice was almost too low to hear. Nothing. It seemed that she cared about little. Of course, Junpei could hardly blame her. Given the strain she was surely under, Junpei was somewhat surprised she had responded at all. Still, he had to ask. He gestured towards the corpse. What about him? Do you think that's really zero? Clover shook her head weakly. There's no way that's him. Didn't I tell you already? Zero is one of us. Yeah, right. I agree. Even if he wasn't one of us, there's no way that man could be zero. Don't you get it? The letters that spell zero on the TV screen. The captain's clothes. He's got on. And of course, the bracelet with a zero on it. It's too obvious. Look, look, this is zero right here. This dead body is zero! Doesn't that seem kind of funny to you? You're right. Only an idiot wouldn't see through something like that. No, that's not the point. I'm not trying to make fun of them for thinking a trick like this would work. I'm sure they didn't think it would work. Which makes me wonder, why did they do it? I think this is a challenge. A challenge from the person who's really behind all of this. He's making fun of us. Huh? Don't you get it? 
if whoever killed this guy really wanted us to think this corpse was zero, they'd never have put a bracelet on him. Walking about with a zero bracelet would be like hanging a sign over your neck that said, I did it! Anyone with a brain would be able to see that this guy is supposed to look like everything zero is supposed to be. Just like we did. The killer must have known we wouldn't think he was zero and put the bracelet on him anyway. Do you know why? Why? Like I said, he's mocking us. Too bad, suckers! This isn't zero. It's the same bad joke a lot of criminals like to play. We'll just sit back and watch people run in circles. Look, here I am with strong guys. Come on, catch me if you can. That's really twisted. But it almost seems kind of childish. Yeah, you're right, it's really childish. It's like it's just a game to whoever this person is. That's what seems funny to me. Jump it bent down next to the corpse. Alright, well, let's get back to the point. Who killed this man? I don't know. And what's this guy's deal? Who is he? How would I know that? If I knew anything, I would have told you. You have no idea who he is? Why would I? Hmm. Jeff, I stepped back on his haunches and thought. We should check and see if he's got anything on him that might tell us who he is. Give me a hand here, Clover. What? We've got to flip him over. How else are we going to search his pockets? Hmm. Clover didn't move. Jeff had no choice but to move the body on his own. Alright, fine, I'll do it. I'm the man! Okay. He grabbed hold of an area not completely covered in blood and shoved. Took a moment, but eventually Junpei felt the man's bulk begin to shift. But Junpei, but just as it did, something fell from the man's left wrist. The bracelet with zero on the face. Lastly, let's discuss how to remove the bracelets. There are only two ways to do so. One, you escape from the ship. Two, your heart rate reaches zero. In other words, once the bristle is taken outside the confines of the ship or de detects that where his heartbeat has fall to zero, it will shut down automatically. Jump, I stared at the bracelet. This man. He's dead, isn't he? Huh? No, it's just... I guess I didn't really think about it until right now. This place is off, that means he's dead. Well, it's pretty obvious that he's dead. You don't really need to look at his... Bracelet to figure out that he's dead. Yeah, yeah, I guess you're right. It is pretty obvious. He looks a lot better than the other bodies we've seen, though, you know? I mean, if there wasn't all this blood, he'd almost look like he was still alive. I mean, I know it's kind of a messed up thing to say, but he kind of has it better, you know? Dying from a bomb going off inside you, I mean, that's just... Some of the snake's bones went right through his skin. I think the explosion must have thrown him against a wall or something. There was a broken bone just sticking out of his left Are you- are you- don't even understand the concept of, uh, too soon or- or, like, her not wanting to hear about her dead brother? Suddenly Junpei realized what he was saying. How could he have been so cruel? He clapped his hands over his mouth. But it was already too late. He turned to look at Clover. She was glaring at him furiously. What did you just say? Her words sounded cold. He knew an apology could hardly atone for what he'd done, but he tried anyway. Oh man, I I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have said that. I really don't know what I was thinking. I mean, no. That's not what I'm talking about. What did you say about his arm? What? Arm? Yes, his left arm. You said it, didn't you? Oh well, yeah, I did, but what did I say? I mean, didn't you see it too? Of course not. I could barely look at him. Clover took a quick deep breath. Are you sure it was his left arm? You're sure what was his left arm? Jimmy thought back. Oh, what did he say about his left arm? I, I, I'm, 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 oh, wait, whoa, what's going on? I'm pretty sure it was. And he had a broken bone, right? What the hell are you getting at here? Just shut up and answer me. She shoved her face close to his. He could see the fire in her eyes. Junpei winced and swallowed. Yeah, he did. 
It was pretty bad, too. The bone was sticking out of the arm. No sooner were the words out of his mouth than Clover's expression changed. Suddenly, she was crying. Junpei wasn't sure what to do. Thank you. It was close to the last thing he had expected to hear. Junpei had no idea what had just happened. Does he have a prosthetic arm? Maybe this is maybe Snake's death is a trick? Or what could this mean? What is what does it matter about his arm unless it's like a prosthetic and he shouldn't even have a bone? He didn't think he'd done anything worthy of thanks, and he couldn't understand why she would have chosen that moment to begin crying. So he simply stood there confused. Thank you, Jempei. She thanked him again, and then something even stranger happened. Whoa! Clover threw herself into Junpei's surprised arms! Um, where's this going? Hey, what's going on with you? I'm sorry, it's just, I'm so happy. Snake's alive! Why? The body in the shower room. It, it isn't his. It isn't my butt. He's got a prosthetic arm, doesn't he? Huh? It's not Snake. Why on earth would you think that? Because his left arm is... She stopped herself. I'm sorry. I really shouldn't be talking about this. Jumpy decided it would be prudent not to press her for any more information. Well, it's gotta be something like prosthetic or something, but um... What could this mean? Let me think for a second. My earlier theory was that if he was alive, then he was zero. Um, the reason I thought that was because, uh... Like, who else would, uh, fake a, a dead snake? I mean, I would think that if Snake was gonna... But then again, if Snake fakes a dead snake and makes it look like, uh... Like, he, he should know! He obviously knows he has a prosthetic arm, if he does or something. And he would know Clover would know, so he wouldn't just leave a bone in... Like, he wouldn't leave it like that. Because everyone would realize, and by everyone I mean Clover, um... And in turn, other people possibly, that he wasn't really dead. Um, what this means is that he can't be Zero. He's just snooping somewhere else, doing something. He found some kind of secret passage, I'm guessing. Um, and that's what I thought. But uh, the reason I thought, you know, Snake was Zero was because um, if anyone was going to leave a fake dead snake, it would probably be Snake himself, so he could uh, leave them with that impression and then wander about, watching them as they were all, were all scared and sad, and he'd be like, <laughs> um, somewhere safe. But if he, uh, without, but if he didn't set up his dead body correctly, then it couldn't have been him, because he would know that Clover would catch on if he set it up that way, which means someone else did. And it couldn't be Clover, because Clover knows about the prosth prosthetic as well, like, or whatever it is. So that, that's interesting. Um, this opens up something. I, I'm glad if Snake is still alive, that means there's still more possibility for Edgeworth, baby. <laughs> Sorry, I just, I love the voice, the, uh, Yes, quite. Objection. <laughs> if she did not wish to tell him, she certainly had a reason for doing so. Perhaps more importantly, however, if Clover was so certain, then she was likely right. That meant that the body in the shower room wasn't Snake. It's a setup. Someone wants us to think Snake's dead, then? Someone wants us to fight amongst ourselves? I, I don't know. It wasn't much, but that knowledge lifted some of the weight from Junpei's heart. He's still alive. I'm so happy! Tears shut in her eyes. To be fair, he could still be dead. All this means is that if he uh, is dead, he's somewhere else. But uh, I, we shouldn't think negative. Those tears melted Jinpei's heart. As she cried, she had pushed himself up against his chest like a child. Jinpei put his arms around her and held her tight. Jinpei, you were right. Huh? No matter what happens, you can never lose hope. Oh, the four-leaf clover! Yes. You have to remember what's most important, and that's to have faith. And to have love. If you can remember all of those, that'll bring you good luck. Clover reached into her pocket and pulled something out. It was a laminated bookmark with a four-leaf clover. I only made it here because you gave me this. I was suspicious of everybody, and I was angry and miserable. But because I had this four-leaf clover, because of what you said to me, I... Okay, let's make a lot of that. I'm, I'm sorry, no, I'm, I'm just kidding. Uh, let's not ruin that moment with this. 
Uh, I'm not sure if you're trying to go for a romance thing or a friendship thing or not, so I'm not going to push it. Junpei hadn't thought his words would have had such an effect on her. Her words were making him feel a little awkward. Thank you so much, Junpei. She looked up at him. She, he scratched his nose and pretended to notice something interesting somewhere else in the room. <laughs> if you really want to thank someone, uh, you should be thanking Santa. Santa? Why? Well, he was the one who gave me that thing. And the words for each leaf, I got them from him too. Huh? Then suddenly... Clover broke away from Junpei. Huh? He looked confused. He hadn't thought she'd react that poorly. What does this mean? Clover began to pace across the room. Six steps to the left. Six steps to the right. Another six steps to the left. And then she stopped. D did Santa really tell you those things? Her eyes were serious, but not angry. Yeah, he did. Did I uh, say something wrong? Oh no, not at all. In fact, this could be really good news. I think... You think? Santa knew about the words and the clover. The only people who should know about that are the other subjects. What's going on? What is this about the experiment? Subjects? The other people who were in the experiment nine years ago. With my brother and me. Okay, okay, this is this is big, this is big. But, but, but... But what does it all mean? Tell me more about the experiment, please. But he's blind. Snake? Yeah. And I was part of the Nevada test group. So neither of us would be able to recognize the faces of the people who were on this boat. Whoa, time out. Chippa held up his hands. He took a deep breath and let it out. Let's just calm down for a second, okay? Start from the top. Don't start with the end and then jump to the middle. You gotta start at one and then move to two and three and four and so on. If you don't tell me stuff in the right order, I'm never going to be able to figure it out. Clover nodded. Alright, let's start with this experiment. What happened on this boat nine years ago? Oh boy, we're really getting somewhere. Do you know about, uh, morphogenic... What? He did. And the realization sent chills down to Junpei's spine. Um, I'm not quite sure. Is that talking about the feels that you can't see with the naked eye, or is that something else? Ah, uh, whatever. Alright, how about this? Theory of the telepathic mechanism. Junpei recounted what Lotus had told him earlier. Clover nodded. Hmm, telepathy, huh? Well, that's not really it, but I suppose it's similar. So, they were testing telepathy on this ship? Or something similar to telepathy? What? Yeah, I guess so. So what exactly did they have you guys do? The same thing that we're doing now. What? Exactly the same thing? Nine years ago? The number nine again? No way! So wait. When Zero said some of you have played this before... He was talking about you, Snake, and... Santa? What? The Nonary Game. Nine people were put on this boat, and nine others were... put in the building in Nevada. And the game started. Junpei grabbed the sides of his head. Look, I'm sorry, but I don't get it. What do the Nonary Game and some telepathy experiment have to do with each other? Clover bit her lip. She blinked back sudden tears. What happened to her in Nevada? The ability to access a morphogenic field is affected by a couple of things. The first is epiphany, and the other is danger. You know how sometimes when you're up against a really tough problem, and then the answer just kind of pops into your head? Uh, yeah, that's happened with me before. That's an epiphany. And what you learn from the epiphany can be transmitted with telepathy. When you, when you add danger to the equation, then it gets easier to transmit that information and telepathy. Over telepathy. You're saying the Nori game was supposed to introduce that element of danger. Yeah, but... It couldn't be just any old danger. 
it had to be life and death. And, okay, this is some serious shit right here. Ugh. So they've been hiding this for a long time, but for what purpose? And, someone did actually die. But only one person? But I thought only five people could get out, or what? A girl. A girl? Chip, I felt the sudden grip of despair on his heart. Something deep and distant and powerful squeezed him for a moment. He felt very, very empty and alone. What? She was on the boat with my brother. I was in Nevada, so I never met her, but... I did hear her name. What's her name? Her name was... Um... Oh, of course you would come in at the... This complete point. Sound of the door opening was like a gunshot. Jump, I spun around. Oh, my apologies. I seem to have disturbed you. Are you not... You might be doing this on purpose. Because, like, if it was, uh... June, you, and Santa... Wait, no. Snake's not dead, I just realized. Um... So, I don't know what's going on. That completely changes everything. Never mind, I'm not suspicious of you anymore. I'd still have the kind of in the back of my head, because you do know a lot about ships. Maybe you've, uh, captained a ship before or something. But, uh... You're not, you're not on my radar anymore. Sorry, I forgot. Snake's not dead. Or at least if he is dead, we, we haven't found his corpse. Ace. You two must have, uh, strong stomachs. I can't imagine how you could stay in this room for so long. Ace glanced down at the floor. The corpse covered in blood. At any rate, Junpei, would you be so kind as to come and help me with something? I'm having a little trouble. I could really use your assistance. Come on, it'll only take a moment. With that, he turned and walked back toward the communications office. Clover waited until he was out of sight, then spoke in a small, quiet voice. I don't want Ace to hear us. We can talk about this later. Huh? Hey, wait. Clover ignored him. From outside, Junpei could hear Ace calling. Junpei, what are you doing in here? Hurry up! Ah! Coupling himself, Junpei stomped off toward the communications office. Okay, back into this stuff. It's happened again, twice in a row. Okay, so let's see. Items is still just the music box, I believe. Uh, let's see. One, two, just two places. What about this? Oh, that's the way back. Well, I'm back in the room. What's going on? Uh, um. So let's see what we got. A uh, small screw. Ooh, that could be good. Hmm. A set of small screwdrivers. Perhaps we can use them to dismantle some device. I'll get back to that. A ink. A bottle of ink. It's filled with ink. There's nothing in the drawer anymore. Okay. Um, it's an old telegraph machine. So what do you need me to do, Ace? Like, do you have something to spe spe specific you should be in mind, or what? I'll be honest, I have no idea how it works. It's an old telegraph machine. Nothing suspicious here. Okay, so we got a chair. A chair. And we got these things. Look. Look, a hook. That wasn't a joke! I know, man. I know. <laughs> sure it wasn't. Junpei, what are you doing? We've searched the wheelhouse from top to bottom. There's no reason to go back. In fact, don't you think it would be wise to investigate the captain's quarters? I think we ought to check both rooms, don't you? Uh, I was just in the... Shut up! Um, unless this is the captain's quarters, I don't know. A clock mounted on the wall. The hands are moving. aren't moving. A little surprised the time is wrong, though, I suppose. And there's nothing on the back. Um... The cable that comes out of this is connected to the desk. What does that mean? A pair of headphones. I can't hear anything. Guess whatever they were connected to doesn't work. Anymore. Ah, get away from that for a second. 
Anyways, look! It's a model of a steam train! How on earth did you arrive at that conclusion? Hey, guys, look! It's another- wait, it's a monkey with glasses! How on earth did you- <laughs> Uh, second verse, same as the first. Um... Oh, is that everything? Yeah, uh, before I mess with that thing, let me quickly, uh, mess with this thing. Uh, ooh, ink, that's right. Uh, let's go ahead and find the screw. Alright, this screwdriver ought to make short work of this music box. Cylinder. Looks to be a cylinder for your music box. There are a number of pins and some pieces of metal that look rather like fans attached to it. Okie dokie, smoky pokey. And uh, this thing again. It's a telegraph key, machine for transmitting Morse code. I tried sending an SOS earlier, but... Uh, I doubt that did anything. 